they're finding caves in the Amazon that were inhabited 30,000 years ago, way before people thought that that people were supposed to be in the Amazon. And so the Amazon is very likely the fertile, in my opinion, the fertile crescent of high culture throughout Central America or throughout South America. And then it carries up to uh, Central America as well. Where have they found these caves exactly? <clears throat> Uh, the southeastern side of the Amazon. So, you know, a lot of the archaeological work um, that's done are on sites that are kind of on the edges of the Amazon. People don't go directly to the center and start, right. you know, doing excavations. So they kind of start on the outside and go in. But, you know, they may never make it to the center of the Amazon. It's it's uh, it's like two million square miles or something crazy. Yeah, right? I mean, it's almost impossible tra to traverse. But there's one archaeologist, his name escapes me right now, <clears throat> but he has been down in the Amazon his entire life and has found multiple cities. And these are cities that are made out of, uh, that are made out of earthen mounds. So like, uh, and he, he's in the same area, he's on the western edge of the Amazon, um, exactly where, where Paul is at. And the, the thing about it is you're not going to go out into the Amazon and find stone structures in that part of the Amazon because it's all clay on the ground. So what they would do is they'd have these buckets and they'd build like earthen mounds and pyramids um, in the Amazon and they would build these canals to each other and they build these raised streets so that you know it rains so much so you can walk on a road without it being flooded they also built their houses on top of mounds and they built their gardens and farms on top of mounds and then when it would rain the little canals and aqueducts that they would build they had these little boats and they would sail to other cities in the center of the amazon through artificial rivers that they had created and these cities are being found all over the place i'll, I'll show you i have a couple of photos here now what evan what have, have they carbon dated things inside these caves to say that there was yes. a, there was people there 30,000 years ago? Yes. Yeah. So so in this cave, um, in the cave that I'm talking about, uh, you could look up like 30,000 year old cave found mm. in southeastern Brazil. So here's one example of these cities. So what they found is like, like on, on the surface, there's not a lot to see, but all throughout this entire area, they're finding evidence of homesteads. But a lot of these homesteads were just built out of wood, right? I mean, they were like a they were wood thatch roofed homes, but giant settlements full of millions of people. And so you can see these, uh, you can see these depressions. What's thought is that these were kind of like moats. And so they held water and it allowed the water to slowly mm. seep over onto the center area to um, like feed their crops. The Egyptians did the, they did exactly this, this exact same thing. And then they would also have these little boats that they would sail to. So they have these giant straight lines that go all the way across the jungle and like the lowlands on the outside of the jungle where there's, where there's not trees. And they could sail to other cities just on these little rafts in the middle of the, in the middle of the jungle. Now, what's thought is that these may just be satellite towns that are on the outside of the Amazon rainforest and that somewhere deeper in there, very likely, I mean, LIDAR is already showing that, that, that these exist. You're, we're very likely going to see bigger earthen structures, like massive giant pyramids and stone structures as you get away from the Western Amazon where it's all clay, you get closer to the center and, and closer to the Eastern side, you're gonna find more uh, like stone in the ground. And so they've already done LIDAR scans that show uh, in the Mato Grosso region of like southeastern Brazil, exactly where Percy Fawcett. So in uh, in his expeditions in the Amazon, his first expedition, he was trying just to map the uh, river, I think to establish a border around like Brazil and Bolivia. I think that was his first thing. And then when he was there, he had grown a distaste for the uh, arist aristocrats that were in England who looked down on native uh, on native people in the Americas. And he grew to love the native people because he saw something in them, kind of like what we're talking about, that guy in Papua New Guinea. These people are connected to something else. There's something else, uh, you know, he, he was a, like one of the first guys that realized that the way that they cultivated, the way that they built their cities, the way that they cultivated their crops was all mathematical in nature, that they knew about math, that they knew some things about, special things about science and geometry, about tracking the sun. They, they had a, they had like, uh, calendars as well, which which are not not calendars, but they had uh, clocks that they would build into the ground where no matter like depending on where the shadow was, they could mm -hmm. tell what time of year it was and when the next seasons were coming. And he he was a guy who maybe not was the first person to actually discover these things, but he popularized them. And so <clears throat> he's at his horse dies. 
uh, he his his horse dies, and then they like eat his horse or whatever, and at this place called Dead Horse Camp, and he writes a letter back to his wife that says uh, he was like. He was like, in the area that I'm going down now in the, in the uh, Mato Grosso region or whatever, he's like, very likely I'm going to find the entrance to Zed, which is this lost city that he's looking for, uh, which aligns to some of the oral traditions around there that like there were people all throughout South America. There were probably multiple of these massive cities um, full of lots of gold and wealth because, you know, he's hearing about this, uh, man, I... I may, be, I may be mispronouncing this or getting the name entire, entirely wrong, but there was a city called like Ziputli, something like that, and he just called it Z. And then there's also the story of El Dorado, which is on the northwest side. So he's on the southeast side. So there's multiple stories of these cities that sometimes get jumbled together. Like people think he was looking for El Dorado, but he wasn't. He was looking for a different city with its own legend. So he descends down into the Mato Grosso region of Brazil, goes missing. Nobody ever sees him again. 97 years later... They run big LIDAR scans over that area and they find a city exactly in the area that he went missing. And it's complete with a step pyramid. It's complete with its own temples, its own city grid layout that they speculate may be aligned to certain constellations that are in the sky, which would have meant that they cleared out the land that they lived in. Like they chopped down all the trees so that they could study the stars. And they found uh, aqueducts and highway systems that lead deeper into the central part of the jungle. But, you know, you need the money to fly these planes. Like, it's not as easy as, like, you buy a drone that has a LiDAR camera on it because those are crap. Like, you need you need a LiDAR camera on a plane that costs, like, $50,000 to take it out for one mission. And I just don't think that there's the money there. So that was... <sighs> just over a year and a half ago that they found uh, that step pyramid and nobody has walked there today. Nobody has walked out there. They haven't sent more LIDAR drones out there, but they know there's a massive highway that's going straight off into the jungle, definitely to another city, but it's so dense and it's so remote and it's so far out there that nobody is crazy enough to do it for free. You know what I mean? Because the Brazilian government, they've got their own things going on. They're not really worried. Like, what are they going to do? Uh, a big part of if these places are even going to be explored and excavated is can they make a tourist site out of it? You right. know, can they bring people in to come look at it in the middle of the Amazon? Hell no. You know, that's impossible. Mm. You'd have to, you'd have to build a massive road straight through the Amazon to bring tourists there. I, pe you know, people who are advocates for the Amazon literally do not want that to happen. I don't want that to happen. Um, so it's, uh, it's, yeah, I mean, that's a frontier of archaeology, but very likely the origins of South and Central American religion and culture come from somewhere deep inside of the Amazon. That's in a, in a, a city civilization that's never been found. Mm -hmm.